but reintegration, like how do you kind of reintegrate these people, these individuals and change their mind and kind of help them out in any way to benefit society once they're out and kind of give them hope and that, that light at the end of the tunnel, not, you know, you're going to get out there with just where you started and you're not going to be in a good place. Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to how Norway's prisons are different from America's. This is by now this news. And I've always heard, you know, here in the US, I've always heard bad things coming from people from around the world, Europe, UK, about how ours are. <laughs> I think we know how our system is just flawed and not the best. It's not rehabilitating whatsoever it seems like you just you just keep getting slapped on the wrist and and much worse than that and other countries seem to do it much better they actually you know care for these prisoners like citizens instead of just throw them throw them uh, in jail and just kind of let them fortunately rot away a lot of times it's it's a it's a one of the many things that are just i hope can change in in, in some better way in the future to be hopefully probably more like Norway and probably Europe in general and the UK. I think it's much worse here how we run things and just the whole economics behind it. So let's, let's just jump into this and see the difference between Norway's prisons and America's. Staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life, but that's also an ambition to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible. And in here, you have uh, my cell. So I have uh, DVD and uh, movies from there. The basic question that we ask ourselves in Norway, what kind of neighbor do we really want? Uh, because they could move into my neighborhood and they could move into your neighborhood. So uh, I think this is an important question to ask ourselves, really. That should have an influence on how we work inside prisons. Like this, for example, the U.S. has the world's largest incarcerated population with 655 out of every 100,000 people behind bars. And that's just an unfortunate reality that we, that we have here. And it's just not it kind of like our it, it, this is along the lines of our, our health here, our health insurance or health care over here, hospitals or bills. It's the same kind of just such a massive monster that you have to slowly pick away at and kind of reinvent the way that we do things here to kind of catch up, in my opinion, to the rest of the world. We might have different opinions about that. Maybe people think it's great, but that, that's just, that's me. We don't do it well here. That, that's my thought. So 60 in Norway out of 100,000 people compared to 655. That is crazy. Almost 600 more people per 100. It's just unbelievable. It's not for, for the prison to judge or to punish. We have to interact and be human. It's, I think it's as simple as that. most important thing is how we treat people. This is the four key elements that I would like you to remember. The principle of normality, the focus that we have in Norway on humanity inside prisons, what we call dynamic security, and the emphasis that we put on reintegration into society. I think that's the huge one there. Sorry, I keep pausing and I'll, I'll stop after this. But reintegration, like how do you kind of reintegrate these people, these individuals, and change their mind and kind of help them out in any way to benefit society once they're out and kind of give them hope and that that light at the end of the tunnel not you know you're going to get out there with just where you started and you're not going to be in a good place I, like I would the say the main goal have. of the trip is for inspiration to go bold back in the United States Let's talk a little bit more about Holden then. How do we work and what are the unique, unique things about us? And in here you have uh, my 
myself. So I have a DVD and uh, movies from there. Here we have a real toilet with a shower and everything. You know, you Super can see nice, everybody honestly. have their key. Uh, so they can open uh, or close to their doors whenever they want. Even though it's nice here, it's still not a summer camp. But I would like you to, you know, look be beyond the facilities. It's not the most important thing. So this is the cell. Every cell is uh, similar. And uh, here we have the kitchen, where I uh, used to prepare the food. You can see here, it's inside here. That's a really important principle in Norway, which talks about that taking someone's liberty away and taking them away from their family, away from their community, that in of itself is the punishment. So life inside prisons should look as normal to life in the community as possible. And in here, you have this uh, washing room. You can uh, wash the clothes and uh, dry it. Staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life. And I noticed you're wearing just you're just wearing normal clothes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's allowed. Um, you can wear whatever you want. Um. But that's also an ambition to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible. That's you know the normality principle. How you can normalize the correctional setting for individuals to transition out? Bigger challenge in our system. Um, but definitely something to think about. The commissary, the stores, where an individual actually gets to go to a real store and pick out commissary items. I think that's a, a good add, adds to the normalization. We think this is the most important part. Dynamic security sounds like a very fancy thing, but it's really just it having a normal interpersonal relations between the officers or all staff, really, and the inmates. Every inmate has a primary contact officer, and every officer had to have two or three inmates that he is the, you know, the contact officer for. That was the ambition, from guard to also be a social worker. Yeah, I think that's smart. That's, I think that's what <clears throat> people need, humans need. The main subjects at the academy, ethics, psychology, communication technique, criminology, law, human rights. Of course, they do learn self-defense, they do learn extraction techniques, they do learn to work as a team, but that's not, you know, that's not the major components. It's about how do you treat people respectfully. <laughs> My family always think that I just play games, because that's why I like very much to play games. So uh, I often play, uh, uh, play cards and stuff with, uh, with inmates. I know in some states it's you yeah. know, forbidden and will have consequences for you if you interact with inmates as a staff member. Quite the opposite here. We expect uh, and demand an interaction between staff and inmate. It's kind of friendship with someone. Um, and to see the progress and see the changes, that's the best way to job. Uh, they have the right, here we go, this is what I was, I was gonna talk about. They have the right attitude. And it would be interesting, I don't know, there would probably be some hybrid, a little different how they do it in other countries. Probably every, every country has their own unique way of doing this, but kind of follow this as a guideline and to, to reintegrate people into society to be feel like they're needed in society. And they, they see what they're like putting out to society and I'll change their mind within these these prisons to be able to do this and to feel confident in themselves when they get out instead of just go in jail for multiple years and then come out pro worse from when you started with no help inside. I don't know exactly what they do, how they do those prisons here, but it's just, you know, obviously not anywhere near this, this level. It'd be interesting to see a small group, like they make a test prison it's a real prison but like a kind of like this test to see how it how they can use this system or this form here in the u.s and just you know put in 100 inmates there and, and see kind of how this process works over a, a few years and see can it actually work here how do we tweak it to improve it 
and are they reintegrated into the system into the society afterwards i don't know maybe i'll run for president who knows just kidding uh, the contacts officer is, I would hate that. for example, sitting down with you and making you a future plan. Yeah. Huh? So what for um, steps by steps to be, become a free man? From, from day one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the officers need to know everything about the system and give advice to the, uh, to the inmates about, you know, the future, what steps should they take. Photos of my daughter, big love of my life. I've been here for one and a half year, but I was transferred from a prison in Brazil. You can compare that to Oof. come from hell to heaven. <laughs> it's, it's a big difference. The guards, first of all. Uh, in Brazil, the guards are... Uh, more you feel bad and weakness, the more they feel good. Here you have the guards, you know, they, they was very kind to me when I came. They are still <laughs> very kind. Um, we can speak, you know, they treat me as an, a, a, human. a human being. Uh, yeah, a person. In, in Brazil you get treated like an animal. I've been working here since uh, the opening in uh, 2010. And I've been working other prisons before that also. It's not for, for the prison to, to judge or to punish, because the police catch the guy, goes to the court and, the, and it gets a sentence perhaps, and then it comes to prison with that. We have to interact and be human. It's, I think it's as simple as that. It really is, because we can, we can create walls between us, but that doesn't help anything. We have to communicate, we have to interact. Without a pro- And that's what oh, the training that they talked about earlier. Whereas the US, it could be weeks that some, a prison guard can be trained. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it's definitely not, you know, psychology and, and talking to these people and kind of being their counselor as well as, as you know, a guard as well. But the, it really shows, you know, their training through everyone that you're uh, that we are, are watching it really shows for them and what they believe is right and i believe is right and how to reintegrate these people into the system coaching people with respect way. and dignity it's impossible to sit down the next day and talk about his future because he will not have any trust in you so uh, in order to you know work well with reintegration and future planning etc there has to be you know, a foundation there of trust between the staff and the inmates. Seems like common sense. I don't know. I've visited a lot of prisons in the United States as well, and somehow I don't have the same kind of feeling of, you know, relief of getting out of an impressive environment that, I, that I've experienced coming out of those prisons. Mm -hmm. I think that says something about how different the environment is here. I think uh, I have big opportunities uh, here to, to prepare myself for, for the life uh, after uh, prison. I thought there, there is still hope, there is still opportunities, you know, to, to get, a, get a good life after uh, getting out. So, yeah. Yeah, I think what he just said too, we uh, squashed those hopes here in the U.S at least for certain prisons and certain sentences. Whereas over there, they give them hope. They treat them like a human. They, uh, they want them to get back into the system and be healthy and, and kind of be, befriend them while they are in, in prison. You know, of course, that's like the punishment right there. They get their punishment. He's been in here for one and a half years. We're coming up to it. And, you know, he has pictures on the wall of his family, who he loves. His, you know, and other people have their children, stuff like that. Of course they want to get out. Of course they'll not want to just be there forever. So that's kind of their punishment. Once again, for over here, and every country probably has their own unique, unique ways that they would have to go about this and tweak it and change it maybe in, in, in certain ways for it to be effective and useful. It's interesting to see that th this huge, very big difference between the two countries. And I would like to know how it is in the rest of Europe, maybe in general, and the UK. I wonder if it's more of like a 
between Norway and America and in the US. It's kind of like an in-between one for prisons there. Which way it leans more, towards Norway or towards the US? I would like to know which way the prisons are because I feel like this is especially nice, especially good to get them back out there. But let me know what your thoughts are, what your country's like. That definitely deserves a like for me. That was great. And I liked everyone that they interviewed. Now I have a much better understanding of how, you know, Norway, for example, has their prisons and kind of what they're thriving for, which I think is fantastic. So let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, thanks for joining and uh, see you. See you then.